I love it here at Gigantica. There's some absolutely stunning fish in here. Um, you know, the one I had this morning was was an absolute cracker, really. It looked more like a stone acres fish than, than, than a fish you'd expect to catch in France. In fact, it looked like the number nine bus from there, which is uh, probably one of the best in the country. Uh, it wasn't quite as big as that, you know. It was uh, it, it was a it was a thirty pounder, but nevertheless, I, I don't tire of catching fish that look like that. An absolute cracking looking fish. Um, and you know, I, I, I caught some absolute crackers last year, but each year that I fish here, I'm learning a bit a little bit more about the place and a little bit more about the fish's behaviours and, uh, and what they actually want. And I'm, I'm starting to realise that the fish want to be in certain areas and they want to feed in certain areas. Now, whether that's an area that's seen bait for the last three, four weeks, whatever else, and they're used to picking up bait on these spots, or whether it's a, a natural food lard that we've just got on the back of and, uh, and we're baiting it, it, I don't know. But I do know that it's, it can be quite spotty out there. And if a certain area is kicking off, then that's definitely worth some attention. Or the main area that sees bait in the swim is usually the one that's, uh, that's doing the bites. Um, so what I've done this year is in the main area out in front of me, uh, just to the right of uh, Stink Swim opposite, and I'm concentrating two rods on that spot. And I'm just sort of drifting a third round about the swim. You know, I've gone quite long, dropped it back shorter, I've moved it round a little bit. But the more I think about things, the more I think that in this sort of depth of water, the fish spend most of the time cruising around at half depth, three quarter depth. So a lot of the time, I don't think they realise that the food's down there. So as soon as they fancy a feed, I'm sure they're going back to spots where they know bait's going to be, or spots that have been baited for the last few weeks. I think that's the key. So blast them to the horizon beyond where most people can cast is, is probably not the answer on it, or certainly not this time of year. Um, just fishing a sensible range where people have been fishing and constantly putting bait in the preceding weeks I think is the, is, is the key because it's the main spot within the swim that's been doing the bites and not the areas necessarily where the fish have been showing in numbers which is sort of out towards the centre so yeah, it's, it's, it's quite interesting and it's a bit of a learning curve for me and I've also learned that the fish come in batches um, you know this morning when I was playing my fish Sean had a fish next door um, and the guy in Coe's had one as well, um, uh, Mike in Coe's had one, which was a, you know, a cracking long um, 25 mirror. Um, it must have been 30 plus at some point, it's that long, um, but it's obviously spawned out, it's had a good healthy spawn out, so that, that should be a decent fish back here, back end of the, um, the year again. And it was the uh, you know, same a couple of days ago, right? it's almost like you know, you flick a switch. Um, you know, my brother had a fish, um, a fish came out of Alcatraz, um, Steve Cliff had a uh, you know nice looking fish one down in oblivion and it, it it wasn't any sort of set zone within the lake that was kicking off it just seemed like all the fish just sort of clicked and uh, and fed it you know within, within a one hour period so it's important to, to, to keep your baits in the water and get your baits in the water at those sort of key times. So uh, that morning sat here Looking uh, behind me here down the margin, uh, saw a few fish uh, nutting out and crashing close in down the bush. Uh, can't quite cast it because of the overhead uh, hanging trees. Um, so I uh, donned my brother's waders and uh, walked down underneath the bushes, a little underarm flick, uh, donked down onto some uh, hard standing gravel that was down there. Waded it back up, popped it on the alarms, um, sat back uh, with a cup of tea. 15, 20 minutes later, uh, bobbing went to the top. Quite good on the way in, came in, uh, slipped the net underneath her and that was a uh, baby cluster at uh, just over 39 pounds, 39.14 I think it was. Um, so yeah, that was nice. And strangely enough, second time on Gigantica, all the fish that were in here, baby cluster was one of the ones I caught last year. So uh, more than welcome, but, uh, but uh, a recapture uh, nonetheless. I took it back down there um, that night, just after dinner. Um, five o'clock in the morning, went off again, another, another tench light take. And, uh, and again, it was just a, just a dead weight on the end, just a, just a lump, uh, wallowing in very slowly. Uh, picked up a little bit of weed on the way, but uh, nothing major. And uh, slipped the net over it in the night. Couldn't really see what it was because my uh, head torch had broke. Uh, so uh, got the torch out of the bivvy, uh, put the light on it, and uh, wow, was that, a, was that a fish. It was a fish called uh, Starburst, and it weighed in at uh, 56 uh, pounds. Lovely, lovely, stunning fish uh, called Starburst because of all the uh, dozens and dozens of small scales uh, towards its, uh, its tail on one of its flanks. 
So uh, yeah, absolutely uh, over the moon with that fish. Yeah, it was a bit ironic that um, I spent all that time leading about, 130 odd yards out, finding a, a bank of weed and uh, you catch an absolutely stunning 56 pounder from uh, no more than two yards out from the bank. Absolutely over the moon with a, with a stunning fish. I've actually had five fish now. Uh, my first fish came Monday morning. Uh, a little bit out of the blue really to be fair. I was expecting feeding times to be first thing in the morning or actually through the night. Um, this ripped off mid-morning really. Uh, my second fish actually came on the Tuesday morning. Uh, absolutely blown away with the fish. Uh, absolutely pristine condition. 38 pounds, 12 ounce common. Uh, which, which beat my PB, uh, which is it's just magical. I mean, all the lads came around, helped out. Bayliss were there again, helping out. And yeah, it was, it was just magic. And um, I, I, I didn't imagine it, to be fair. Wednesday morning, breakfast roll got delivered. Bang, rod was away, 24 rat rod. And uh, yeah, got it in the net. Again, absolutely pristine fish. Uh, 24 pound, a few ounces over. Not, not really bothered about that. Expecting my alarm clock to go off just for first light, about half five, something like that. Instead, the, the fish had different ideas. Five o'clock, middle rod, off it went. Um, amazing fight. Got the fish in the net, absolutely blown away. Got that up, it was 27 pound mirror. Absolutely stunning fish again. Immaculate, scale perfect. My other rod's absolutely flown off. Uh, the right hand rod again off the main spot, 27 wraps. Hit into that, amazing fight again. Try to take him into the reeds, stuff like that. I'd already brought my PB with the common, so I was happy as anything. Again, a new PB, 40 pound, 12 ounce mirror. Absolutely stunning fish. Definitely going to be back, 110% about that. What an amazing place. Yeah, nice way to end the week. Cracking common on Saturday morning. It makes packing up a hell of a lot easier.